All right, here we are, another live stream. This is definitely going to be the last live stream of this year, 2021. It's been actually kind of great in some ways, kind of not great in some other ways, but uh, I'm very excited to be live streaming with you today. Hope you're doing well wherever you are, wherever you're watching from. If it's on your phone, maybe, uh, I don't know. You might, you might just be curling up on a rainy day with a cup of coffee, much like I am today myself. It is a rainy day, but we're talking cameras and gear and answering your questions that you got for me. So by all means, please, if you have questions, drop them into the chat. I would love to answer them. Also, just let me know where you're watching from. Always interested in that stuff. And if you give value out of this stream at any point in time, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe. Now, I know we just started, but I need to take a sip of this coffee because I haven't had any yet this morning. So you're going to witness a little ASMR sip action. So if you don't like that, you can turn me down now and then uh, get ready for the rest of this stream. One more, sorry. That is good stuff. I realized too, I put in the chat <laughs> just before the stream started. I said, uh, just burn some coffee, grab a cup and let's hang out. And then I imagined in my head, somebody literally just grabbing like a mug or just a random cup. And they're just like, all right, let's start the stream. Let's hang out. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know if you have a cup in your hands, just let me know, I guess. Uh, so today we are talking about this camera here. This, well, I gotta get the focus right. This is the Sony A, oh, A7 IV. <laughs> oh man, here, let me take this off and I can reveal without a lens. Boom, that's much better. So this is the Sony a7 IV. I pre-ordered it. Um, I pre-ordered it like the day it was able to pre-order on B&H. And uh, if you're, I, I didn't realize this at first, but like when you're pre-ordering cameras, they'll announce it with like a video and then they delay the pre-order by like two or three hours, I guess, to kind of like, I don't even know why they do that, but they do. So anyway, I was refreshing like crazy, trying to pre-order this thing. Finally got it through. Thought it would not be shipping until like the 31st. So like tomorrow, uh, December. But um, anyway, here it is. So A7 IV, I've had it now for just a little over, or about a week now. I think it came in Christmas Eve. And uh, I haven't had a ton of opportunities to play with it, but... What I have done so far, I've really been loving this camera. I think it does a lot of things really well um, that the a7 III just did not do. Now the a7 III, which I'm currently streaming on, that's my A camera right here, a7 III. Um, that camera did some really great and innovative stuff for its time when it first came out, which was, what, 20 maybe 2018 or so, 2017 at this point, and it's still a very capable camera in a lot of different ways, but uh, for me, and I think for many users of the a7 III, it left a lot to be desired in some of the features, and um, as successful as the a7 III is, was, uh, there was a ton of quirks inside of the camera, and so they've addressed a lot of those problems with the a7 IV, and um, it's just awesome. Like, so I'm curious, like if you got questions about any of this, I'm going to just go through a run rundown of like my favorite features of this camera and, um, talk about some of the use cases for it. But if you have questions about the camera or any other questions in general, we'll get to some more stuff here towards the end of the stream. I need one more sip of coffee guys. I'm serious. It's only 9am here, um, in California, but it's so rainy right now, so it just feels like, blech. <laughs> Let's see what we got in the chat. We got uh, Pratye Route. hope I'm pronouncing that right. 
It says, hi, good to see you, friend. Hope you're doing well. So first thing I got to talk about here on the A7 IV is that beautiful flip out screen. This is the biggest like request that I had for the A7 III. And I'll show you later once I hook this up as a webcam and as a, se a second angle how um, I'm currently using my A7 III. I did a video some time ago about how you can kind of like hack your mirrorless cameras that don't have a screen and you can put like a little mirror on top and then it reflects the screen and shoots it back at you. It's okay. It's not really great if you're outdoors or anything like that, but if you're just kind of like trying to frame your shots, I can see my settings, I can see the audio coming through. It works fine, uh, but having this having some real like feedback and then having touch capabilities to go in and change your focusing points or to uh, adjust your settings your iso whatever it's just really nice to have um, and it really should be standard on all cameras that flip out screen or at least some variation of that so you can see yourself while you're filming uh, but obviously that's not the case and i'm glad sony put it in on the a7 IV because even on like the the sony a1 they have uh, like the screen, like the a7 III, which kind of got me scared. <laughs> so I'm like, no, please don't do that because people want to have that flip out screen to see themselves. So uh, I've done a little bit of like vlogging and stuff, a little vlogging test um, so far with the screen and it's great. Now, as far as like the resolution of the screen, as far as the resolution of the EVF, it's better than the a7 III. But if you've uh, at any point in time used, I think maybe even the a7R IV, or the A7S III, uh, both of those cameras, especially the A7S, I know for a fact has a better LCD screen and a better EVF compared to this camera, but this camera is still much better than the A7 III, so not a huge deal breaker if you've never used an A7S III or whatever and saw the EVF or the back of the screen. You won't know what you're missing until you experience it and then you come back and you're like, ah, okay, but still, Nice little upgrade. It's a bit higher resolution. Uh, just looks better. Gives you more just real-time feedback that's really helpful to have. So love that. Uh, other stuff too. One of my favorite features by far is this uh, mode switch, which uh, I'm at 1.8 right now, so I don't know if it's going to catch it all. But on the top here, there's this little mode switch where I'm going from photo to video, S and Q. This is really bomb for just getting settings really quickly to change. Um, so if I'm using the camera, I'll go ahead and fire it on here. And I've got my photo settings. We'll go ahead and set it to something random here. I can have my photo set up this way. And then, let me see here, give it a little context have my photo settings and then just switch it over to video and I've got my S-Log3 profile and everything attached to it as well as a custom ISO and then if I switch it back to video or photo mode I've got my different settings I could set a different white balance things like that um, which is really great um, saves you a lot of time saves like a ton of time instead of like on the a7 III, it was like ma manual mode into video mode. And then you could do some things from like custom modes, but then I don't know, it just, it was really difficult. I was like turning picture profiles on and off and then switching white balance and stuff. And it was just a big pain in the butt. Clean, clean HDMI out. Yes, sir. There is a clean HDMI out on this camera and it's great too. I'll, uh, show this a little later but the usb is also capable of doing things like the live streaming and stuff it's all built into the camera so you don't have to do um capture card at all actually i don't know about the audio i haven't really tested that yet but i'll show you later what this looks like as a uh, webcam and um it's really nice i love it the uh bless you <laughs> my wife just sneezed but i like the body of the camera Overall, I like what they did to the outside. It's similar to the, oh, you can kind of see my face. Yeah. You can see that the body is very similar to the A7S Mark III, just being a little bit wider, a little bit of a bigger grip on the camera. Feels really good. Um, 
I just really love it. It's it's just nice to hold in the hand. The A7 III always felt like just a little bit too small. And then like your pinky was always like looking for a home. So some people got like attachments to put like an extra rest for a pinky down here or something like that. So don't really have to worry about that with this camera. Um, yeah, it feels just really solid in the hands. I also like too, they added the uh, record button to the top for video up here. So that's a nice little feature to have, have it set apart. I found that when I would like try to mash the button back here, sometimes I was hitting other things. So having it on the top is really nice. Um, what else about the body do I really love? Oh yeah. Someone, uh, someone didn't like me doing this, but just showing off that the sensor closes. Now I'm not touching the sensor like shutter or anything like that, but the shutter closes when the camera turns off you can turn that on or off i kind of like it because then it protects the sensor um, i'm sure there's a chance the dust could get in there but probably not super likely all right maybe it's likely i don't know but anyway i like having it uh what else here do we have this nice custom dial up here this one i actually map for my video stuff and let me change this to custom white balance and you might be able to see, does it work this way? Okay. So if I have this here, you can set this custom dial instead of just exposure compensation. You can set it to, hello. <laughs> you can set it to different, different things. So right now I'm changing the white balance to super cool by doing Kelvin and then I'm making it super warm. And you can just do that with the scroll of this. It's kind of nice to have because then you don't have to go inside the menu system at all to mess with any of your white balance settings. You can just kind of have it there, set it, and forget it. So I like that function of this camera. And what else? Card slots. People get crazy about card slots. It's got two of them, like the other camera, except this one has the first one on the top, first slot, and then second slot on the bottom. I don't know if anybody else coming from an A7 III thought it was weird that it was like number one was on the bottom and then two was on the top. But uh, yeah, so I uh, recommend for sure that you would want to get at least like a UHS-2 SD card that's V90. It gives you more capabilities, uh, especially once it comes to doing your video stuff. You're able to shoot like that all eye uh, with that. There is a CF Express Type A uh, option for this, which is similar to the A7S3, but um, I just like the options that we have here. It feels super solid. The door is nice, much nicer than the A7 III. Also, the port doors on these guys, this is leaps and bounds better than the flappy doors on the A7 III. So, I like that. I like that it's a full size HDMI. This camera just does a lot of things super well. I'm going to take another sip of coffee. If you got any questions, go ahead and throw them in the chat. I also want to move into talking about like video features, photo features. Starting with photo, uh, this has incredible autofocus, which is not a surprise from a Sony camera, especially a Sony like flag well i guess flagship whatever but it's one of the top you know newer tech cameras gets stuff from the high end brings it into here so the autofocus is great um shutter sound sounds all right and we can go to uh drive speed if we want i think it does like 10 frames per second so not the fastest in the world but super solid super reliable um what else do we have here? 33 megapixel sensor, which is really nice. Gives you a big ability to crop into your image without losing any sort, uh, without like losing major detail. And I like that because I'll sometimes shoot landscape, but I end up posting a photo in portrait mode for like Instagram or whatever, um, or just, you know, reframing your shot. There is also the ability to do APS-C crop mode, which will punch into the sensor 1.5 times, and then it will reduce the sensor to about like 15 
uh, megapixels, I believe. So it goes from like 33, you can crop it in by one and a half, and then you'll have a 15 megapixel, megapixel sensor. Gives you a little bit more reach, which is nice if you're using like a super wide lens or if you're using a prime lens and you can't quite get closer. So that's something that I do quite a bit. And then for the video specs, 4K looks beautiful. 4K 10-bit color is really just an amazing thing to work with, especially if you're using one of the older cameras and you're coming from that 8-bit lifestyle. It's not a ton of fun <laughs> to try to like grade that sometimes, uh, but this has great dynamic range, uh, just works super well. The only thing is like the 4K 60 frames per second does have the crop, the 1.5 crop. Um, it's not a deal breaker though for me. It just, it works really well. I think it looks beautiful. I like to use my slow motion for more closer shots anyway, as opposed to tighter shots. So I think uh, I think it, it gets the job done. It works really well. You can grade it. You get all the different video codecs inside. I've been using the uh, H.265 implement, implementation of their video codecs, which is like the high efficiency one. And that works with M1 MacBooks or M1 computers in general for Macs. So that works really well. And I've been enjoying that process of editing. Okay. <clears throat> I think it's a good time to get this guy set up as a webcam, I'll show you how that works. And then we'll get to answering some questions here in the chat, as well as a few questions that I asked on my Instagram that some people had for me that I'm going to answer. So in order to make this work, uh, you should be using the included included cable, which is USB-C on one side and USB type A on the other. This is included in the box with your camera. The camera has to be in video mode, but as soon as you plug in that USB-C cable, you will be prompted with some options. And of course the cable is running right in front of it, so that's not super helpful. But the first option is live stream over USB. So I hit that and it's just saying you can use your function button and then uh, basically you're there, good to go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and choose my source here. Boom, and I've already got it set up here. This is my second camera angle now. Uh, and if anybody was curious, this lens is the Tamron 17 to 28 f 2.8 lens and we got it for a little while now and i've been really loving it nice wide angle perfect for vlogging type stuff so we are now on the a7 III, i'm sorry a7 4 and i've got real time eye tracking in this and i've got all my nice clean settings now we're back to the a7 III. another thing that is great about this is that you do get some options for the live stream functionality. Excuse me, bumping the mic. So if you go to your menu settings, you basically get four options for your frames. I'll go ahead and show you those. So you get 4K. <laughs> so let's start on the bottom, 720, 30 frames per second. You get 1080, 30 frames and 60 frames. And then 4K at 15 frames, which doesn't really make a ton of sense because I don't know anybody who's streaming at 15 frames per second unless it's like a stop motion or something maybe. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and show you the flavors. So this one here, whoop, this one here is 1080, this is 30 frames. I'll flip this around here. So this is 30 frames. This is now still 30 frames going back. I want to show you the 4K option. Oh, we blacked out. It's because OBS. Anyway, back to our 30 frames. So, this is our 30 frames, 30 frames per second on the A7 IV. I'm going to go ahead and pop this guy up here. Predetermined location. And now uh, get a little view of what's going on here. Drop that down. Okay. So then we get a nice little view of the setup here and I can zoom in a bit. Got my DD mic here. Yeah, works pretty well. I think this looks great actually as a 
webcam. I feel like this looks better than this in a lot of ways. It's just much sharper. Um, let me know your thoughts on this webcam here. Okay, getting that set up. Got a few questions in the chat. Answer those. <clears throat> okay, Pratt Ye is asking, what what is the best camera for both photos and video under eight hundred dollars? Hmm, under eight hundred bucks if you're just getting a body. But if you, I don't know, if you're asking for a new camera and you're not saying that you have any certain types of lenses, then I'm assuming you're going to want some lenses too, or at least a nice solid lens. Um, I know like Sony Eco system, I would say there's like the photo and video. There's like the ZV E10 as like one of the newer ones. Um, there's also like some of the older A6000s. Or if you can find like a use A6400 with like a kit lens, that would be a really good option to go with. Um, I used to have an A6300, which I recently sold because I knew I was upgrading and getting a second one. And then I was going to downgrade my A7 III from my main camera to my B camera. And then the A7 IV would be my main camera. So something like an A6000 would be good. But you can always look at like an M50 or an M50 Mark II. Those are pretty solid. I think for those are Canon, those are pretty solid options and they're generally not too crazy expensive. Um, with the power of technology, we can actually check this out ourselves. So just to see what we have here, what does an A6400 go for nowadays on Amazon? So they're still selling the A6000. Interesting. Uh, so A6400, that puts you just above $800. That would probably be my suggestion, is if you could find something like this, and then you could potentially find a used option. Uh, but this would be the one here, I think, because you get 4K, you get great fo uh, photos, 11 frames per second. Um, I believe it even has like the eye auto focus inside of video mode, which is pretty spectacular. Um, let's see, maybe Canon and 50. Let's see what we have on that. Yeah, M50 is even less money, and that's a renewed, so that would be a used version. But I think if it's that close in price, like difference of a hundred bucks, just save your money and get the A6400. That would be my recommendation on that one. So that is what I would say. Let me go back to here, show a little bit more of what's going on with the setup. Um, you can kind of see here, I've got my A7 III just hanging out. Got my little mirror on top. And my mic that I'm using today is the DD uh, D4 Duo, I think, is the name of it. Um, saw a video my buddy Ben Johnson did about this mic, and I'd wanted to upgrade for a little while because I was using the Rode Video Micro, which I still own, but it was just kind of getting weird poppy sounding and just wasn't really great. Um, so I decided to get something that still doesn't need power, isn't crazy expensive. I got it on like a Black Friday deal with this guy. And then you can, now that's making noise to you, I'm sure. But this will, uh, has a mic on the back. So if you're like vlogging and you turn the camera around, you can still get audio from the back while pointing it forward. So I just wanted to have that capability because I thought that might be nice to have. And so far I like the mic. It's a little flatter in response, but um, you know, sounds pretty good. Uh, who else we got here? Jarius, Jairus, enjoy, says hi, good to see you. Hey, if you guys got questions, please, please drop them in the chat. I'm still working on my first cup of coffee here. Let me know if you have any questions, too, about the A7 IV. I'm going to answer a few questions that um, 
I had people, I put a poll out or like a questionnaire type thing out on Instagram, asked some people, what are some questions that you might have for the camera? And the first question that I got was, what's the main difference between the a7 IV and the a7S III? The main difference is that the a7S III is a primary video focused camera and the a7 IV is trying to be a jack of all traits. And I would say the a7S 3 is one of the best video cameras out right now. And it just happens to be able to take photos. Now, the photo capability of that camera is, I'd say, adequate for social media stuff. If maybe you're not printing a lot because it's only 12 megapixels, um, that would be a big difference there. But like as far as video features, it's got 10 big color, 4K, all the way up to 120 frames per second. You can shoot 240 frames per second in HD, um, but it gives you all the nice picture profiles, dynamic range, great low light performance, all that type of stuff. A7 IV has a higher megapixel sensor. It's not as capable as a video camera. I don't know if that's because it's actually not capable but i'm sure sony probably just made it not as capable because they would kind of shoot themselves in the foot for you know the a7s but um i think for what it is it's a great all-around camera like super solid if you just happen to be someone who needs really high quality photos and then you could get some high quality video but maybe you're not all in on video that would be the biggest difference um let's see here jerry says i bought the a7 IV but it sucks in the USA. Oh, okay. Can only get it on February. That's a bummer, man. I'm sorry to hear that. I just got lucky and I guess I got my pre-order in real quick and, um, it shipped earlier than I thought, but I don't know. So hopefully that's the case for you too. And then Andres is asking, are you using the a7 IV for this live? So I am, but not this angle. This is the a7 III with a uh, Sony 20 millimeter f1.8 lens and then this switch OBS okay this is the a7 IV and this is the Tamron uh, 17 to 28 f2.8 lens uh, but looks really great I feel like this is quite a bit sharper than the a7 III to be honest now there is like a little hack on like the older cameras where you could set it to 4k even though your output is 1080 and it gives you a slightly sharper image and that seems to work pretty well in some situations but uh, this is just going directly out of the a7 IV over usb and then it's going right into obs and then i'm throwing like a lut on top of it so kind of gives it a little bit more of a colorized look but i mean it's pretty i'd say it's pretty sharp and then, of course, like autofocus and things. Once I cover my face, it does a pretty stellar job focusing. Now it's back on my face because I've got the eye detect on there. So works really well. Very capable, I would say. The only thing I'm not sure is like audio. Well, apparently it does get audio. So then maybe that's your all-in-one solution. Because otherwise... I would use, uh, one second. Otherwise, I would use just like a little cheapo capture card. That's what I'm currently using for this camera. Um, and this does like 1080 up to like 30 frames per second. Um, I don't know if I have a link down to this. Probably not in the description, but these are like 20 bucks. These came out sometime in the year 2020 and made capture cards a lot more um, attainable for people who are wanting to get in to the mix. Plus there was a huge capture card shortage in uh, 2020, if you don't recall. And so anyway, having a solution directly into the camera is really nice because uh, one of my better videos on my channel is a hack that, or not really a hack, but it's a way to do a big workaround to get your Sony as a webcam, uh, which is now a bit outdated because they've updated, updated like their cameras and software and stuff like that. So, all right, let's get more into the chat. Jairus, I've got an Alexa UHS-2 V60 
Is that enough for 4K with the highest bit rate? No, I think it's got to be a V90 card. Um, I Let me double check here. So I need to get some UHS-2 stuff because I'm currently on like SanDisk Extreme Pros. Um, but let me check. I, I do have a V90 card in here that I borrowed from somebody. This one. It's a V90 UHS-2. One sec. I want to give you the straight answer because that is a thing too with uh, bit rates and stuff. Options that you have through your file format. Oh, let me unplug this. It wouldn't let me. Okay, let's try this again. File format, all I. 24. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, this is not helping anybody out. <laughs> Definitely, I would say you need to get a, a UHS-2 V90 for sure. I don't know. There's some smarter people who have gone through and done all that work, I'm sure, for you. So, I'm sorry. I'm not a huge help here on this live stream. <laughs> Let's set this guy back up. Okay. Do you think Sony uh, will update breathing for no na non-native lenses? So, I'm not sure if that's the case. Um, there's no breathing compensation available for the Tamron lens that I have. I know that. Um, this lens, the 20 millimeter, I know that that is compatible with the breathing compensation. Sorry, this thing keeps like trying to slide. Don't you dare. Okay. So, because this lens breathes quite a bit. If you can't tell, the edges really bad. But you can correct that with the focus or breathing compensation. Focus breathing assist? Something. They call it something like that. That's good. I know that they have it for a couple of lenses, but I even saw a video where someone wanted to use it with like their 50 mo 55 millimeter 1.8, like the Zeiss one. And that lens was not compatible. So it seems like not even all the Sony native lenses are compatible with that, but maybe just the ones that are the biggest, uh, offenders with the breathing. So I know like some of the new G masters have that issue, like heavy focus breathing. So maybe that's something that they'll expand in the future. Um, but I don't know. I haven't heard anything about it yet. Uh, but -da 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 -da. at least it touched the V90. Oh, the 4K60 with the V90 card. Um, no, I don't think you need to uh, get an upgraded V90 card. Um, I don't have another card handy on me, but I'm pretty sure you don't need to to get the 4K60. Um, now, if you want to do like the all I, all intro recording, that requires one of the bigger cards. But like I said, I use the the like the high efficiency one or the h.265 and then every time you select it, it says you got to make sure you have a thing that's compatible with this and i do because i have an m1 macbook so yeah that would do the trick uh, let's see another question that i had on instagram about the a7 IV in general was what's the best lens to use for that camera and I think it's really a question of what you're trying to do um, best. I don't know. Like, I don't know. Best is the, it's kind of like which bear is best. Any office fans? Black bear? <laughs> um, false. <laughs> Black bear. Uh, so I would say if I was to have one lens for this camera, I would probably go with like a either a 16 to 35 or a 24 to 70. Although Tamron has come out with like that brand new like 13 or I'm sorry 35 to like 105 f2 2.8 lens. That thing looks insane. Um, wouldn't really serve you super well with like wide angle stuff. I want to show you because this thing is like stupid insane but it's like really amazing apparently 
Uh, 35, 35 to 150. Where is it? Do they have it on Amazon? Has it released yet? Do we not know? This isn't it. Ugh. No, I've got to search for it. Let's go to B&H. When all else fails, you go to B&H. Boom, bing, bing. Okay. Tamron. This guy. Yes. This thing is ridiculous. Okay, so it's coming soon. That's probably why it's not on on uh, Amazon. This thing is bonkers, though. Like, 35 millimeters to 150 millimeters, starting with F2. And then the most uh, stop down it gets is 2.8. I've heard, like, this lens is ridiculously sharp um it's obviously got good reviews at this point but if you think about it it's like this really will um cover pretty much all of your needs that you have so 35 you have 35 millimeters 50 millimeters 85 105 yeah i mean it's pretty ridiculous so anyway best lens i'm not sure might be this one I like to have the wider angle stuff though. So probably like a 16 to 35 for me. But anyway, I digress. Um, back to the chat. Jairus, uh, here's a weird question because I'm just starting out. How do I find clients? Because my main interest is video compared to pictures. Also, which field picture or videos pays the most in your experience? So... Um, yeah, it's an interesting question. So I've done like a mix of both, um, in my, my short time of doing this stuff. Um, but freelancing, I've got a buddy who's done it a lot more. I've got to kind of like pull off some of his experience. I think it just depends on like what industry you want to get into. Like, um, weddings, for example, is a big one, especially like now weddings are just blowing up and crazy because there were so many like cancellations and things having to reschedule over the past like year and a half um so if you're leaning more into video uh, i mean if you could pair up both things provide both options that would be a pretty good way to go about it uh, as far as like finding clients i think it's just like determining what you want to do um maybe at first just try to do some like easy sort of I don't know if I want to say like free, like I've done some free stuff before, but that's just kind of like I wanted to help some friends out. Um, I think that you definitely should get paid for your work if people are willing to offer. But also if you're just trying to get experience, um, then maybe they don't pay you quite as much to get, get you started. And then you can put like a reel together. Of course, have a nice website, get something, go to Squarespace or something, get whatever. And then just have a nice little um, place and platform to just put all your video stuff. Use your YouTube channel if you have that to show off your skills and what you're able to do. Um, I mean, there is a networking side of things, but uh, some of the stuff that I've gotten like work for, I just kind of like did it uh, without really asking permission. Like, um, what is it? Like the brand Jack Henry that I love and use their hair stuff. I just started doing some photos and started tagging them in it and then eventually they're like hey we want to connect with you and do something a little bit more serious and then cool that worked out so getting yourself out there that way is good i think finding some friends finding some networks i've got friends who do wedding photography who are constantly asking me like hey if you're available i could use some help and if you're not do you know somebody and so i think just making friends with people getting connected in that way um if you are able to shadow somebody for a little while who's been in the business for longer than you have, then I think that's a big benefit. And then you can learn some stuff and then take it and run with it. Um, but just make sure that whatever you're doing, you enjoy it. Um, so if you enjoy photos more than video, then cool. I, I, I kind of go back and forth between like photo and video. I think I enjoy video more but I feel like photo 
this might be like triggering to some people. But I feel like photo is a little, it's not, it's not easier. I just feel like it's a little quicker in the process to get things done. Cause for video, I feel like there's just so many more things you need to check to make sure that you're doing it correctly. Um, I mean, when you're doing photos, you don't have to worry about audio, like, <laughs> but you have to worry about that in video and you're already concerned about lighting in both those aspects. So, um, yeah, some people find more value in photos, like, like you said, for weddings and stuff, wedding videos have been popping up more and more. Um, but if people choose one over the other, it's probably going to be photos. If it's more of, um, you're trying to work with small businesses, then I'd say video would be a better option. Um, and then maybe you can even explore the idea of like, you know, get on a retainer with a client and, hey, I'll do X amount of videos a month for you for X amount of dollars. And then you can kind of like average out your cost for that and then work up a little contract. That's also a safe bet to go uh, for some of this type of work. Um, I'm not sure how many people really go down that route or if they just do more of a case by case basis with like freelance. So anyway, that's a big rant for me <laughs> it also determines like you know your skill and your experience and um what you bring to the table so if someone um who has a ton of experience and who's highly sought after uh for their work is asking you know hey for your wedding i'm gonna charge you i don't know five thousand six thousand seven thousand dollars um that's obviously going to make a certain type of clientele only available to them, people who are willing to spend that amount of money on them. But you get a really great experience at return. And, um, you know, you, I always find you do kind of get what you pay for instead of like, hey, so and so's cousin has a camera and they're willing to take your photos. And then they show up with like a T3i and a kit lens. Not to say that that's a bad way to start. Everybody's got to start somewhere, but I don't know. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. That was a little bit of a rant on that stuff. So hopefully there was some value in there somewhere for you. All right. Uh, I have a G9 now, and I'm definitely switching to the a 74 Well, congratulations. You're going to get some proper autofocus. That's the one thing with those uh, like Panasonic cameras. I think they've gotten much better better from what I understand with like the S1, S1H and everything. Um, but they're still not fantastic like the Sony stuff or Canon or Fuji, whatever, or even Nikon for that matter. That's saying something. Um, 1080, 120 frames per second. Is that better than the a7 III? You know what? I haven't even tried the 120 on the a7 IV yet. Um, I have to think about that. Because I was using 120 as a crutch for a long time because I do all my videos in 24 frames per second. And so for like every one second of 120 footage, you get like five seconds worth of 24 frames per second footage, you know, once you stretch it out and post. And so it just kind of, it's efficient, uh, kind of made me lazy and like, okay, good, eh, good, eh, good. And it's nice, but um, I'm trying to stay on the 4K route. So 4K 24, 4K 60, and I'm noticing that with the 60, I've got to be a little bit more thoughtful about my shot choices. So uh, that's a long way around to say I haven't tried the 120 on the a7 IV yet. I imagine it's better because uh, the 120 on the a7 III um, – is kind of soft. You kind of need a lot of light to make sure that it's, uh, you know, crisp looking regardless of your lenses. So let's pop on over back to the lovely a seven four. Again, you can kind of see, uh, my little setup here. My daughter has all of her things over there. Um, nice little fire from Christmas. I think my wife's about to pass through, so you can go by if you want. <laughs> this is uh, the joy of getting kicked out of your office, um, which is now a nursery, because, uh, yeah, you got a kid. You don't have space. 
So now I do it out here in the living room. Um, <clears throat> don't forget, 4K 30 can be slowed down to 80%. Yeah, that's true. I did do that. Actually, um, I did do that in my recent video that I posted yesterday. Some of like the B-roll stuff I was putting over the talking head. That was actually 30 frames, which I was slowing down to uh, 24. It's still not that slow. I needed to like do like a lot less movement or something to make it really worthwhile. But yes, it is a valid option. And then you do on this camera, I keep hitting three. I meant to hit two. On this one too, the 4K doesn't crop in quite as much. So you don't, because that was an issue on the a7 III, is like the 4K would crop in. And then instead of like your full frame, it'd be like here. And that's just not great. Not great at all. Um, I'll even say it's an honorable mentioned too as far as like what's the best lens i don't know if, i don't think it's the best by any stretch but i still think my favorite lens is this uh 35 millimeter 1.8 and this thing is like crazy fast with the focus it's by far my favorite photo lens um love the 35 millimeter focal length and i just love the uh 1.8 on it it's really nice very sharp and I know some people have complained about like oh the bokeh doesn't look as nice I mean I never really noticed that it doesn't look good so I do like that a lot all right we might be uh winding down here see if we got any more questions I'm definitely gonna be doing some more live streams here uh in the upcoming year we got a lot of cool things coming up um I was out of commission for a little while just when our our daughter was born and just just into life with your first kid it's fun it's awesome it's totally worth it for anybody who's interested <laughs> um but got a lot of cool things coming up and yeah if you guys have any questions go ahead you can drop them in the chat if you ever want to connect with me like directly you can reach out to me on instagram it's just at zach sopak z-a-c-s-o-p-a-k and uh i'd I try to answer all the questions that I can there. Um, you know, stay up to date here on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed and notified. Get the bells going on so that we, you know, when I'm posting new videos, um, definitely going to be posting more this year. No excuse. I'm excited about it. It's going to be great. And um, got a few more tools now to uh, help me be a bit more efficient and all of that. So. I think that is where we are going to wrap things up for today. Hey, whoa. Just <laughs> let's play back on the live stream. Real nice. Um, hey, thank you all for joining so much. Hope that you're having a great, great day. Um, hey, until the next time, my name is Zach Topak. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.